Hey guys, welcome back. So today we'll be starting with finally unit testing our app. So at first we'll look into unit testing a service. Then we'll be looking into unit testing a directive. And then finally we'll be moving on to unit testing a controller. Now controller and directive unit testing are quite similar. Uh, yeah, they're quite similar, yeah. So, uh, but the easiest one to start with is the service unit testing. It's basically mocking the endpoint and then just seeing if your response matches your request. All right, so let's get started. Now, in the beginning of writing your test, there will be lots of um, configurations needed to be done. First, there will be the self-invoking function, as usual, and the strict method use strict uh, let's just zoom it yeah use strict right so as we all know uh, okay the ID is acting out okay as we all know we first need to describe the service like there's a describe block and then there is an it block so describe what's the service post service and there's a function and in that function will basically give all our configurations and injecting our modules now in services also we inject some stuff right we inject some modules we inject some dependencies now we inject we need to inject the same stuff into our app into our testing environment as well so let's first before each test is done we have to before each test is carried out, we have to first inject our first module, which is our macchiato, is our module. And then we have to inject our dependencies for that service. Like the dependencies are, let's inject. We have post service. We have um, HTTP. Uh, well, we don't have post service. Okay, that's incorrect. We not we don't need that as, as a dependency. We have uh, sorry, we do again. We need the post service in order to call our post service methods. That's why post service is used as a dependency. So post service, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, we have the HTTP backend module, which is our main mocking module this will help us mock our unit tests and then yeah that's it we don't oh yeah we have the config what what else do you have we have log but we don't want that the HTTP backend is basically injecting the HTTP module but for unit testing because that will help us test now the, look have a look at this fake HTTP backend implementation suitable for unit testing application that use a dollar HTTP service which we are using now this is needed because we want our test to run quickly and have no external dependencies so we don't want the actual calls to happen to the real server we just want to mock it because if the actual calls were to happen if there's no internet of course the call won't be successful and it, it depends on your internet speed as well so thus it kind of slows down our uh, you know testing environment uh, it is also on our testing so yeah so then we have config right now the reason why we are using these underscore in the beginning and the end is because we want to differentiate between them and the variables that we are going to be assigning it to so the variables are post service HD dollar HTTP backend and config now, that, like I said, this is for separating out. If these were like underscore, uh, if these were like written without the underscore in the beginning and the end, then this will also be uh, like similar to this, right? So there will be no way. It's kind of difficult to distinguish. It's kind of like following John Papa style guide. So in the style guide, we basically like differentiate between the variables uh, that we're assigning it to and the injections via the underscore in the beginning and the end. So post service, uh, oops, yeah. So post service, the normal one equals the underscore one, and then dollar HTTP backend, the normal one equals the underscore one, and the config, uh, oops, okay, the config, the normal one equals the underscore one. Alright, so we're done injecting our dependencies. Now, 
the before each part is done we have injected our module which is macchiato we have injected our dependencies now we all after the function is over after each we want to verify that all our http backend like we want to close down http backends service but we want to reset it sort of if you look into the documentation so verify uh, no outstanding exception what it does is it just um, verifies that all requests via the expect api were made if any of the requests were not made it throws an exception so yeah so basically we just verify that uh, like all the requests that were defined by the expect call expect call is what we expect in our expectation in our assertions all the calls made by our expect api were properly made and if not it shows an exception that means and it will show us the error why it's not made properly and then the verify no outstanding requests it checks if our uh, call if our api call need to be flushed or not flushing is basically resetting the call all right, so see, as you can see, you might be wondering where I'm coming up with all those code that I'm writing. Well, you can see it in the documentation as well. The before each call and the after each call are sort of similar. See, the before each, we set up the module and then we inject our dependencies. And after each, we just write this. We just write the whole verify, no outstanding exception. All right, so, all right, so let's get on with it. So dollar HTTP backend dot verify. Uh, let's just copy it out. Verify. And let's set it to false. All right, so this false parameter is given so that it would skip. Like sometimes you would get errors like this, like digest call already in progress. So to make it skip the digest cycle, we give the false parameter. All right. And of course we have the um, dollar HTTP backend dot verify no outstanding request. Okay, so that's about it for after each block. Now, the first spec, the first test spec. We want to see if our post service is properly registered. That's like the first um, step towards checking if your controller has been instantiated, if your directive has been instantiated, if your uh, if your directive has been compiled, or if your service has been registered. These are like the first steps toward testing a service controller and directive. So we expect that the post that the post service should be registered. And the function for it is we expect post service dot not dot to equal null. We're using Jasmine as our test runner, uh, as our test framework, and Karma as our test runner. Jasmine is the default test framework for um, Angular. That's why we are using that. For setting up Mocha, it's a big hassle. So, and you will find most of the support for you know writing how a test looks like from the Angular documentation in Jasmine. That's why I'm preferring to use Jasmine. But yeah, if you want to keep it all, you know, f uh, like. Uh, uniform and uh, you want to have the front end and the back end to have the same kind of test framework go ahead and use mocha but uh, be warned it's kind of hard to set up <laughs> okay so and if you were to set up by the way if you were to set up <clears throat> you would have to modify the gulp file the gulp folder you see here you have to modify the test uh, unit tests file this file you have to see you have to like check what um, like you just have to like here I guess Jasmine is used as the framework so you basically have to check where Jasmine is used and <clears throat> um, just change that I guess mm, that should do I'm just assuming here so yeah all right so describe oh by the way this whole boilerplate template is an extension like my personalized extension of um, of John Papa's Yeoman generator, uh, she, he had a Yeoman, Yeoman generator for Angular app, and uh, I can't seem to find it, so I kind of personalized it. I can't seem to find it anymore. I mean, okay. So get posts. What do you expect from the method get posts? You expect that it should fetch an array of posts, right? 
and how do you check that well you mock basically you mock the HTTP backend call so HTTP backend dot expect you expect it to be a get call and the method is a get call the URL is config dot API URL and uh, plus posts and you expect a response of 200 and you expect the you expect the object to be returned to you to look something like title uh, title then dummy title body uh, sorry <coughs> body lorem ip, uh, oops ipsum and so on and so forth it, it's a dummy body so uh, the body can be whatever you want it to be <laughs> I mean the the object can be whatever you want it to be the object that's returned to you all right so you can keep it as accurate as you want or you could just give dummy data it doesn't matter because you're basically mocking the call but you are expecting something similar to that so now you want to make the call the actual call it's not going to do the actual call because you first of all you mocked it with the HTTP backend uh, module so it's gonna actually it's gonna make a fake call it's not gonna make the actual real call because for that you will need the server to be running all the time all right so you expect the data and you expect that the data that you get from the call from the service call to be kind of similar to the maybe you want to check the title is similar to uh, a dummy title Right, you want expect the data dot body to dot to equal lorem ipsum. All right, so these are your expectations from the call. You expect the data to look somewhat like this. Okay, so that's for the get posts call. Now let's do a similar thing for the create post. I'm not going to get post a single post because it's similar. All you have to do is pass in the pass in the ID here slash ID. You have to uh, you expect that the and then you you pass in the ID over in your call. It's kind of the same. You'll see. Uh, I mean, you can also see it in my repo the code I wrote. It's also you can also see like first try it out yourself and then you can see how how much it matches to you what you wrote. So this will be for create post. So you, it should create a post object, right? So it's a post call and um, slash post slash create. And uh, what do you expect? You expect you expect the body itself, right? <clears throat> so let's just keep the body somewhat here bar expected body equals like this so you expect the expected body now here after making the actual call create post and then maybe okay let's not name it expected body just name it post so you pass in the post and then you expect the for example let's just check out the title you ex at least yeah you expect the data dot title to equal dummy title you expect the data dot body to equal lorem of sum all right now at the end of every service call you always have to flush the call it's kind of like resetting the callback you it's kind of like resetting it's like resetting the service call you want to flush it out so at the end of every so testing every service HTTP call you do that so that's that's about it for create post let's try with delete post delete post now what do you expect with the delete post you expect a delete call post slash you expect the ID 
post uh, <clears throat> slash ID. Now you have to give an ID for it, a dummy ID. So let's just say the ID is um, like this. Just right. I'm just giving a sample ID because again you're mocking the call, so you don't need a body, but you can have it because no, you don't need a body. All you do get returned is an object that says, <clears throat> sorry, that says uh, removed true, <clears throat> right? That's what you expect because if it's successfully deleted, you get the you, uh, you get the removed true object. You removed object removed property to be true. So here it's a delete post call. So delete post. You pass in the ID. And you expect data dot removed to be true. So how do you write that in Jasmine? To be truthy. <laughs> it's kind of funny way to say true. To equal true could have been fine, but no, they had to use truth. I guess they just wanted to make it fun. <laughs> All right, so um, post slash ID. Uh, let me just check if the um, service URL is fine for delete post. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so that's for the service test. Now let's see if our testing works. Let's just give it a roll. So gulp test. Doing that, we have to, first of all, all of these functions are done based on a callback because all the HTTP calls are based on promises. Like you, after you get the data, you pr you have a, you give a promise that you will return the data and after only returning the data you can process it that's why we usually write dot then dot then <clears throat> after every calls so the done keyword is done whenever we're doing an asynchronous as you can remember in uh, in our server side coding we used to give done as our callback because we were doing asynchronous calls so these are asynchronous functions so it has a callback so we need to write done in the end so let's test it out. Ah, <clears throat> uh, shoot, ran into an error. Let's see. Okay, so I think I made an error in the casing of lorem ipsum. Uh, for, at the beginning, it was um, uppercase, and one was uppercase, and one was lowercase. So let's see if the test works. Yep. So it's a four on four success. All the four tests are success. Post service should be registers and registered and post service dot get post should fetch an array of posts. So yeah, all of them work. You can also try out the get post one. It's similar to delete post. You can see just change up whatever the object it returned to you is and you can test it out. So uh, service testing is done. Next up, we're going to be doing directive testing. Uh, so stay tuned.